Hi everybody, um, I'm going to just run through with you how to do pulse checks in the whole body. So we're going to look at the radial pulse and the specialist test to do with the radial pulse. Then we're going to look at the brachial, carotid, aorta, femoral pulses, popliteal pulses and finally the foot pulses. I'm going to run this through like it's an OSCE with some explanation as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, hello, my name is Dr. Davis. Um, what's my your name is Dr. Larvia. And what's your date of birth? 28th May 1998. Thank you. Yeah. And um, is it okay to do some pulse checks on your body? Um, I've told us kindly already exposed his, himself, but yes, we should get exposure to look at the abdominal aorta and also ideally have the, the trouser leg above the knee, which will help. So I'm going to just start with the, the radial pulse, but before that, I'll wash my hands, as always. And obviously maintain privacy um, in, in the room itself. So I'm going to check for the, the radial pulse, which is just lateral to the flexor tendon, the carpi radialis. And I'm going to use three fingers in the finger pads of the fingers um, to check for the radial pulse. Okay. While I'm doing, while I've got the pulse, I'm going to start the time. I'm going to ideally measure the pulse over 30 seconds, but for the sake of the video, we'll go over 15 seconds. So here we go. Okay, so over 15 seconds, I've got 18 beats. So if I times that by four, that's. Um, and that's 32 beats per minute. I'm also thinking for the rhythm, and the rhythm is normal, um, regular rhythm or normal sinus rhythm. I'm happy with that. The next specialist test I'm going to do with the radial, radial is the radial radial pulse. So I'm going to check both radius pulses together, my bar, and there's no delay. There's no radial radial delay between the two pulses. I'm looking particularly for coarctation of the aorta. So if there's coarctation, you may get a delay um, in one pulse arriving at the, the wrist and the other pulse. The next thing I'm going to do is the radial femoral pulse on the same side, the ipsilateral side. Remember, the femoral pulse is located between, halfway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the symphysis pubis, or the pubic tubercle. So it's halfway between, about here, in the groin crease, and it's it's all you could say the mid inguinal point. So I can locate the femoral pulse, feel the radial pulse at the same time, check that together, there's no radio femoral delay. We're going to do the same on the other side, so we've checked the, the radial pulse. But I'm going to just check for the femoral pulse first, halfway between, remember, the anterior superior, superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle in the groin crease, and check the radial pulse at the same time. For the sake of the camera, I'm just doing it from this side, but I would go around the other side to do that. So the next specialist test that we're going to do with the, the radial pulse is the collapsing pulse. And what we're looking for with this is whether there's any severe aortic regurgitation. So before I do this, I'm going to just ask the patient if you've got any pain in your shoulder. Great. I'm going to lift up your arm quite quickly above your head. Uh, so just warn the patient what you're going to do. And I'm going to palpate for the pulse in a slightly different technique with my thumb underneath the wrist, my fingers over the, the pulse, so I'm feeling the pulse underneath my fingers, and this just gives stability when I lift up the, the, the arm, straighten out the elbow, lift up the arm quickly, and do I feel under my fingers a collapsing pulse, like a waterfall effect, with severe aortic regurgitation. Okay, now we move on to the brachial pulse. Remember the brachial pulse is in the antecubital fossa, um, you've got your biceps tendon, and it's just medial to the biceps tendon. So we're going to use three fingers to check the brachial pulse, and check on the other side too. Three fingers, just medial to the biceps tendon. And then I move on to the carotid pulse. Remember, the carotid pulse is a central pulse. Now we can check for the volume and the character of the pulse. And if you're coming from the anterior approach, you can use your thumb. Now your thumb has got a, a pulse in it. But the carotid pulse is a strong pulse, so you don't need to worry about that. 
So you can use your right thumb to the left carotid. So right thumb to the left carotid anteriorly. It's just lateral to the trachea, just anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now remember with the carotipals not to press too deeply because that could stimulate the carotid sinus. Some people get very sensitive carotid sinuses and that makes them quite dizzy and unwell. Also remember, Abidan, never do both pulses together. Um, you can temporarily um, stop the blood flow to the brain, um, so that's not a good idea either. So right thumb, the left thumb now will be to the right carotid. Okay, so feeling the volume and um, yeah, that's the, the difference between the systolic and the diastolic. That's the volume. I'm going to move you forward. We can also approach from the anterior aspect. This time we use three fingers in the anterior aspect, one side and then the other. Okay, great. Thanks, Abdullah. I'm going to now move you flat, Abdullah. So now we're going to look at the abdominal aorta. Sometimes in some subjects you can see it pulsating away, and particularly when it's um, an aneurysm, that might be evidence. Easier in thinner subjects than uh, more obese subjects. Um, and what I'm going to do is put my fingers parallel to each other, slightly apart, maybe two, three centimeters apart, and palpate deeply. I want the stomach muscles to be relaxed, so it's good that his arms are relaxed by his side, and ask Abdullah to breathe in and out. And as he does that, I'll press down deeply to feel the abdominal aorta. And I can feel the pulsations against the edges of my fingers. Again, I'm feeling for the size of the abdominal aorta. Roughly, it should be four to five centimeters, but if it's more than six, seven centimeters, you know, when it's, you're still feeling the pulsations against your fingers and you may have a problem, you might need to get an ultrasound for a possible aneurysm. Now we're gonna move on to the femoral pulses. And we're gonna, first of all, just remember our landmarks, the anterior superior index spine and the pubic tubercle or the symphys pubis, halfway between in the groin crease. And I'm just gonna palpate that first on the right hand side and then also check on the left hand side. Always check both sides. So again, anterior superior is fine. Halfway through, inguinal point, mid inguinal point. Just feeling the three fingers over the clothes. In the exam, if you just explain where you're looking, we don't expect you to expose the patient. Now we're going to move on to the popliteal pulses. So you're going to lift up the, the legs slightly at 30 to 45 degrees. I'm going to put my thumbs over the anterior tibia. And the other thing is going to wrap around the, the leg and go deeply, just below the, the crease there, and press deeply. So I'm pushing the apopateal artery against the posterior aspect of the tibia. Again, do that on both sides. Push hand hard with my thumbs and go back round, feeling deeply for the popliteal. Now, if you've got small hands, particularly for the women, and you've got a man with big muscles, and it's sometimes difficult to wrap your hands all the way around, so sometimes just, just approach from the back. You don't need to put your thumbs at the front. Okay. Now we're going to go to the foot pulses. So we're going to look at the dorsalis pedis. It's two thirds of the way to the ankle. And if I lift up Abdullah's toe here, you can see his tendon, and it's just lateral to that. Feeling with three fingers again. Often it's just one finger you feel it with. And check with the other side as well at the same place. He's got good, strong um, dorsalis pedis pulses. Now we're going to look at the posterior tibialis. Remember, it's not on the lateral aspect, it's on the medial aspect. This is the medial malleolus, the bony prominence here. Posterior to that behind, about two, three centimeters below the um, medial malleolus. Again, feel with three fingers. I might actually do both sides at the same time, just to compare. Great. So that's all the palpation of the pulses. We can also listen for bruis, and bruis um, are usually caused by a stenosis in the artery. So we're going to lift up Abdullah again, just bring you up again. I'm going to start with the crotted. So I'm going to use the bell of a stethoscope. So just check it's on. I'm going to ask Abdullah to take a deep breath in. Hold your breath, Abdullah. Listen for a few seconds, breathe away, deep breath in again, hold it there, check on the right hand side. And I can't hear a shh, shh, um, sound of a brewing. 
Remember, a, a carotid brew can have two reasons for having a brewery. One is it could be a carotid artery stenosis, significant stenosis. Now, even in carotid artery stenosis, you don't always hear a brewery. So you don't, might need to get further investigations. Um, but if it's bilateral, if it's both sides, it could actually be aortic stenosis radiating to the carotids. So I might just listen over the aortic valve. Again, I might have just ask, I've got to take a deep breath in, hold it there, just listen over the aortic valve. Okay. You can also listen for uh, renal artery brewers and also femoral and popliteal. But I've just demonstrated, just listen over the femoral. And on the other side, listen over the popliteal. Go quite deep. And the other side, just back here. And that's all the pulse checks. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you, hope you found it helpful. And any questions, just subscribe to our YouTube channel.